ignorant slug. You just imagine what might have happened if I wasn't so intent on improving my vocabulary. I never would have given Ike a second look, and none of this would have happened if you'd paid me half as much of mine as them books. Well, I ain't doing it just for me. For who, then? For us. A bed and breakfast ain't like a Motel 6, Sonny. People expect a certain level of taste and sophistication. You saying I got bad taste? What I'm saying is there's other ways of breaking up with a man besides trying to shank him in the kitchen. Now, now, listen, I had no part in that. Don't patronize me, Sonny. I know that you've been hanging with Ike Worth on the yard. Patronize? Oh, it's a transitive verb to treat with condescension. Now, listen, if you want out of this relationship, if you want to spoil all our plans, you just say the word. I can take it. Hell, I've had my heart broke a time or two before, you know. Come on, Elvin. You know that's not what I want. Well, what then? Well, can't you hear it? It's ticking again. My biological clock. We've been through this a thousand times. You ain't got no biological clock. That's what you think. Sonny, look. There's not an adoption agency on this entire planet that is going to approve of us in our current situation. Then we're just going to have to change our situation. Oh, don't be stupid. Look, we only got six months left on our term. Oh, I can't wait. Please, Sonny. It, come on. Here, here. Have a Snickers. I don't want a Snickers. I want me a baby. I'm scared. Now or never. Your sister, when did you talk to her again? Yesterday. She had triplets. Two boys and a girl. Use his button. You sure she said we could have us one? We could have us all three if we want. Well, I don't know. On Valentine's Day, 1998, George Washington Jefferson was released from Florida State Prison on a weekend furlough. The state attorney, Renata Guzman, called the program a second chance. Unfortunately for Laura and Larry Kresselberger, Mr. Jefferson had a problem. He needed his heroin fix. Fortunately for us, there's another candidate for governor, Judge Bob Isom Gibbs. And he thinks he has a better idea for criminals like Mr. Jefferson. He calls his program, Throw Away the Key. If they're going to get to you, they're going to have to go through me first. Vote Maximum Bob. He kills cons dead. Well? Well, what can I say? You're a genius, Lana. Move me.
I might just have to vote for myself twice. <laughs> Judge, I hate to be the sour pickle in the jar, but don't you think that spot will alienate every African American in the state? The short answer is yes, Your Honor. But since African Americans comprise approximately 3% of the voting population in this state, there are statistical irrelevance. Taking notes, Hector, there's a lot you can learn from this man. I feel I'm pulling my weight, Your Honor. I don't get all bent out of shape. You're important to me, too, Hector. Just keep reminding me of that. So, Lyle, how are we doing on those polls? Ten weeks before the primary, and we are eight points ahead of Guzman. Music to my ears. We keep this up, and that little Latina's gonna be back refrying beans in her family restaurant where she belongs. <laughs> now, come on, Hector. Time to dispense some justice. Let's blow a fastball past anyone who's got two strikes on them. After all I've done for that boy. Oh, still. Showed him the world, broadened his horizons. Hell, if it wasn't for me, he never even would have heard of Martha Stewart. Damn it, Elvin, don't move. We have us one little spat, and he runs off with the first bald-headed father figure he comes across. I can track you anywhere now, so don't try anything funny. Okay, here's the deal. You don't talk to anyone, you don't look at anyone, and you don't get within arm's reach of a telephone. At night, you sleep in the lockup, understood? Understood. I truly appreciate what you're doing for me, Sheriff. Save it for your parole here in Elvin. And you can start by making me a list of everywhere you and Sonny ever hit out. This is outrageous, Judge. Watch yourself, Counselor. You might be next. You have irreparably prejudiced the jury against my client. I Ooh. think your client did that himself. You heard me warn him, didn't you? And then you heard what he called me. Oh. Oh, you see, Miss Baker, I don't think you give these ladies and gentlemen enough credit. They can make up their own mind about what kind of man this defendant is. And that right there is the beauty of the American judicial system. Your Honor, release this man or I move for immediate mistrial. A motion denied. Judge There'll be no more outbursts from the gallery, either. Don't you recognize me? Should I? Gail Tyrone. I clerked for you last summer. Miss Tyrone, of course. I recognize you now. And I know I taught you better than to hold up state's business for a little chit-chat. So sit down let this court proceed. Miss Baker. Not until you release my client, Your Honor. You're gonna have to gag me, too. I will if you don't sit down and close your mouth. I won't be silenced, Judge. Neither will I. I'm gonna tell the world what you did to me. Last August, Judge Gibbs sexually molested me in his chambers. Now, hold it right there. You forced yourself on me, ripped off my clothes, and bit me on the buttocks. And I've got the scars to prove it. Call a press conference, Lionel. Draft a statement. I could say she and I were never alone together. And even if we were, I don't go in for that sort of thing. Well, sure, I enjoy a little sports banking in the sack as much as the next guy. But I have never, I repeat, never sunk my teeth into any woman's flesh. <laughs> never. Of course. Right. Uh, Judge, do you want some professional advice? The last thing you want to do right now is dignify this charge by making a comment. No, Your Honor, the press is starting to swarm. With all due respect to Lionel, you can't just sit here like some boy hiding in the outhouse. I'll tell you what I want to do. I want to throw that Gail Tyrone in a cell with a big, sweaty, tattooed woman named Bronco. A couple of nights of that, and she'll come clean. I don't think you need to go there, sir. This is Okeechobee County, son. We can go wherever we want. At least let's issue an official denial of the incident. My experience tells me to wait and see if this thing just doesn't play itself out. What about Mrs. Gibbs, then? Can we get her to help us out? Leanne. Oh, no. Any chance she hasn't heard yet? Damn. Leanne, are you in there? Hey, Big. I come bearing gifts. Oh. For you, Leanne. The sweetest honeysuckle on my hillside. They're beautiful. And now, let me pop open the bubbly and have us a little impromptu cocktail hour. What's the occasion, Big? No occasion, just genuine and abiding appreciation. Boy, oh boy, it sure is getting high and deep in here. What do you mean? Mr. I'm no ass biter. Oh. <laughs> now, I can explain as heaven is my witness. Oh, save your breath, Big. <laughs> I have something for you, too. It's a phylactery necklace. A what? 
You wear it at night to protect yourself from harmful influences. Keeps vengeful women at bay. Oh, why, why are you taking this so well? Because I know you well enough to know you didn't do it. And because I've already figured out a way to clear your good name. You have? A good one there. Thank you very much. Tell me, do you use cloth or disposable? Um, and how do you feel about that new chicken pox vaccine? Well, we think that it's a good thing to do around here. Right? 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 Excuse me. Sure. You pay attention to me, boy, otherwise I'm blowing your... What the hell do you think you're doing? What's it look like I'm Put doing? Put that away right this minute. Hey, hey, don't talk to me like that. I'm working here. There is a baby in here, in case you didn't notice, that I happen to have bonded with. Good. It'll save us some time. How do you mean? You go get the baby, and I'll take care of our little cash flow problem right here, won't I, son? Come with me, Ike. We got to have us a little talk. Honey, I... Boy, you forget you ever saw us. Otherwise, I'm coming back here and blowing your brain all so we can make it look like a Slurpee. <laughs> Sonny! Look, I'm only here as a courtesy to Leanne, so why don't we just cut to the chase? Very well. I need you, Miss Baker. Professionally speaking, that is. Go on. The irony of this is almost perverse, and don't tell me it doesn't give you more than just a little pleasure. It does feel very nice to be wanted. Uh, damn it, Miss Baker, are you going to represent me or not? Not if you got down on your knees and begged me. Why, because I happen to speak my mind? Because maybe, just maybe, I have an overdeveloped appreciation of the fairer sex? Overdeveloped appreciation? Excuse me, but the very first time I came into these chambers, you propositioned me. Now, don't flatter yourself. I proposition every young lady lawyer that walks through that door. Oh, is that so? It's my way of sizing you all up. Now, answer me this. What did I do once you told me to go take a hike? Cited me for contempt. I did, didn't I? Yeah. Momentary lapse of judgment. The point is, I didn't tear your clothes off. I didn't leave any bite marks where the sun don't shine. No, you just threw me in jail. Miss Baker. Judge, I know how this works. Your election, it is circling that drain, and nothing looks better for a man accused of sexual assault than to have a woman defending him. I don't need just a woman. I need the best lawyer in the county. Wow. Do you feel that? Yeah. There's actually enough hot air in here right now to go hang gliding. Oh, no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on now, hold on. Now, okay. Judge, step away from the door. Miss Baker, I'm a frog on a gig. Now, what's it gonna take? What do you want? What do I want? Mm. I want peace in the Middle East, I want heat without humidity, and I want a woman in the White House. I'm sure you'll be in touch. Good day. After you've done that, there's something else I need. What's that? Right over my left nipple. I want a name. A big lettering or small? Whatever size you need looks good after you spell Kathy Baker. Who's that, a girlfriend? Yeah. You could say that. <laughs> I can make one phone call and produce a very attractive woman who will swear out an affidavit stating that she begged me to bite her, and I refused. I have the utmost respect for women. Just ask my wife. And no one believes more strongly than me that no is no. But darling, until it's no, it's definitely most deliciously yes. Ah! Well, put yourself in a woman's shoes, though. Don't you think it would be hard to say no to someone who wields as much power as you? I would never use my high office to intimidate a woman or force her into anything she didn't want to do. These charges against me are not only false, they're ludicrous. Okay, Judge, let's talk about the workplace. Now, you've said that you think it's become unnecessarily tense. Tense? Everybody's pinched so tight they squeak. 
But, Your Honor, don't you think that the new laws have actually taken some of the stress out of the modern office? Taken a lot of the fun out of it, too. You, know, you can't touch anyone, you can't yeah. say anything, because it might be misinterpreted. See, I think someone should do a study on this. Men and women who enjoy each other are going to crank out a whole lot more minivans or radios or burrito supremos than men and women who can't. So what you're saying is that a little flirtation in the office can actually be good for business. And it doesn't have to lead anywhere. And if it does, it can be handled responsibly after work or during lunch. Yep, definitely. That's the two men. What were they wearing? Um, shirts and pants. Did they walk in off the highway, or did they just drive up? They drove. The GTO, half painted, half prime. This is Gary. Give me a second. It's a GTO. Did you, did you get that? Elvin, please. No, not you. Now, listen. I said roadblocks and helicopters. So, as you were saying, a GTO? Would you describe it for me, please? Entree. Hi. Hey, what are you doing here? Came by to take Big to lunch, but he is too busy with this so-called scandal. It must be rough. I mean, on you, too. Is there anything I could do to make you reconsider your decision? You mean about not representing him? I, I wish I could. But you can't. My... My caseload is so full right now. Oh, you couldn't find room for just one more. It's just that, um... You think he's guilty of the crime? I didn't say that. Would it change your mind at all if I told you that while Big can be rambunctious in bed, that he has never been cruel to me or unkind in any way? Leanne, um... Oh, okay. No, I get it. What? Don't you think that it's natural that a man like Big would be attracted to a beautiful woman like you? Oh, come on, if he weren't, it would just go against the primal order of things. But that doesn't mean that he would ever actually be unfaithful. I feel like I have to tell you something before you hear it from somebody else. Um, another woman has just come forward accusing the judge of biting her, too. Well, it's not true. It's not true. So how's your memory now? I never even saw the license plate. Close your eyes. Uh -huh. You heard me. It's a new technique we call visualization. Helps you recreate the scene. I can't. Listen to me, boy. This is very important to me personally. So <laughs> I suggest you give it your best shot. And listen, tell them to get their mug shots over WTGB in time for 6 o'clock news, okay? Thanks. Elvin? Elvin! 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 Listen to me, boy. The big guy, did he buy the little guy a Snickers? Well, I'd rather discuss the differences in our political agendas, but I will say this. My heart goes out to Mrs. Gibbs. As long as her husband stays in the race, she has to undergo an awful public scrutiny at a time when I'm sure she would prefer her privacy. Oh, she's a cool one. Do you hold any credence in these charges against the judge? Well, that is up to the jury to decide. And until Bob Gibbs is dragged into court, it's my responsibility to reserve judgment and keep my campaign on the high road. If you'll excuse me, I have a campaign to run. Dragged into court the high road, that crafty bitch. She's hanging me, and you can't even see the rope. Miss Baker, to what do I owe this honor? I'm your new attorney. Boys, out. You heard the lady. Your Honor, I thought I was your legal counsel. Bam moose, Finch. Who's Marvella Mayhew, Judge? Marvella who? 
Don't gaslight me, Gibbs. No, I swear, I don't know who you're talking about. I don't remember any Marvellas. Who does she say she is? Your second biting victim, allegedly. Now, how could I chomp on this woman when I've never even met her? If you are lying to me... Cross my heart. All right. First things first. My goodness. Nasty. Why are you showing me these anyway? What am I supposed to do, ID this rear end? I'm fairly certain I've never seen it before in my life. You willing to put your money where your mouth is, so to speak? Damn straight. Good. Judge Gibbs, I would like you to meet Dr. Gilbert Zink of the University of Miami School of Dentistry. Look around. It needs work, I know. But just try and picture it. <sighs> Statues of naked Greek gods surrounding the pool. <sighs> Little white rocks in the driveway. A lawn jockey holding up a lantern, welcoming travelers weary from their long journey. What are you talking about? Our bed and breakfast, of course. The perfect place to raise our kids. Oh. Damn it, Ike. You always do that. Do what? Walk away from me. Right in the middle of me talking to you. Excuse me, I thought we were done talking. We? Talk? Well, that's a laugh. Tell me, when do you ever do more than grunt? It's like having a conversation with a sea lion. Now listen, Sonny. I'm a busy man. I got a lot of things on my mind. Like what? Like getting us a lawyer, for instance. What do we need a lawyer for? You don't think my sister's just gonna give us one of her babies, do you? We're gonna have to adopt it. Legalize. I never thought of that. Now, there, you see. Now, what was the name of that lady lawyer that kept you from going to the electric chair? What's her name? She was good. Kathy Baker. Yeah! Now, you see, Ike? Now you're talking. In conclusion, the forensic dental report conclusively exonerates Bob Gibbs of the first allegation. Now, as for the second allegation, well, the judge actually admits to the incident. He did indeed bite Marbella Mayhew on the arm by the water fountain in the third grade. This affidavit from the St. Isaac's Elementary School will be made available to all of you immediately following this press conference. And now, the judge's wife, Mrs. Gibbs, would like to make a statement. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Okay, Neville, we're ready. I'd like to introduce some friends of mine. These are all women who have worked with my husband over the years. And they will all attest that none of them have ever been subjected to an improper advance by my husband. What about me, Mrs. Leanne? Rosita? I work for the Gibbs as her housekeeper, and, uh, and little Rico here. Mr. Bob is the father. That's right. Bob Gibbs! I know you're in there. You come out here and face me. You look me in the eye and tell me that you didn't do this horrible thing. This is ridiculous. How long do we have to hide in here? Keep your voice down. I realize this is a reckless idea, but we could just let her in and tell her the truth. What is the truth, by the way? It's missing a few important components right now, and I can't face that woman till I find them. Can't you just tell her to grow up and get over it? I got 103 pounds of pissed off locks of hatchet woman out there. I need someone a little snappier than that. I'll be back, boys. Keep your powder dry. Going. I better not say. That woman can read minds, I swear. Oh, She's got a gun, do you? GTO, all right? Yeah. Half paint, half primer. Let's give her a look inside. Uh-uh. Can't do that, Elmer. Well, why not? Because we don't have probable cause. Probable cause? Listen, there could be dozens of vehicles matching this description in the area. Now, we got no proof that this is the car that Sonny and Ike were driving. 
Anything we find in there, Judge, would throw out as inadmissible. Well, ain't that a bitch? Kind of ties your hands behind your back. Tell me about it. You know, Sheriff, I'm gaining a whole new respect for you and your end of the law. Can I look through the window? Go right ahead. Just say, Shelby, it's me. Come on to Papa. Oh, you just lost your fur. Oh, Sheriff, I'm going vasovaginal. It's a constriction of the vagus nerve, causing sudden loss of consciousness. Man? My son is... All units, this is the Sheriff. Respond to Palmetto and Pine. We located the GTO. I repeat, all units respond. Get an ambulance. Well, of course Leanne is crazed. Exactly what do you expect after news like that? A party hat and confetti? You don't fool me, Miss Baker. I don't? I'm trying to sidle up to Gibbs, ride his coattails all the way to the state house. Excuse me? You know how long I've been with a judge? A lot longer than you've been a lawyer, I can tell you that. I've given that man the best years of my life. Really? I stood behind him in good times and bad, suffered his scorn, ate my share of humble pie. So if you think I'm gonna let some Barbie doll with a night school law degree and a tight blouse get between us now, you've got another thing coming. Here. What's this? Chapstick. Huh? No ass kisser should be without it. <gasps> Miss Baker? Sonny? You got to help me. It's a matter of life and death. My sincere thanks, gentlemen, for the use of your vehicle. It's a matter of life and death. Howdy, Miss Baker. Remember me? Who is it? Telemundo! Hold on there, Rosita. Rosita, aren't you happy to see you roll Babalu? I thought you'd be tickled Rosado when I came knocking. You used to bring me flowers. Come on, now think. You defended me in 1994 in Miami. I handled over 300 cases that year. Give me a break. But I know you remember mine. I'm afraid that I don't. Look, I got 10 years for shooting the wrong dink. Followed a guy into a public restroom. Shot the guy in a stall next to him by mistake. <laughs> Got him three times in the heart, remember? Bada bing, bada boom, boom, boom. Oh. That ring a bell? Come on, come on. No. Damn it, it's me, Ike Worth. Where did you find this guy, Sonny? I liked Elvin a whole lot better. Ike? What's going on here? Why aren't you asking her about the baby? No. <laughs> Miss Baker, I love you. Will you please run away with me? Huh? You were meant for me, and I was meant for you. What the hell, Ike? Sonny, shut up. I'm in the middle of something here, all right? Where was I? Oh, yeah. From the very first minute I ever saw you, I knew. How could you do I... this to me? You never wanted a baby. It was her all along. Damn it, Sonny, shut up! Miss Baker, I'm like a young virgin. I haven't done it face to face in four years. Oh. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, it sure was sweet between us once upon a time, Rosita. And baby Rico here sure is cute. But uh, any child of ours have to be at least three years old. Now, how much did Renata Guzman pay you for that little melodrama you put on? First of all, I believe Renata will be a fine governor. Well, I'm glad to hear you tried to ruin me based on your political principles and not for any filthy lucre. And I needed the money, honey, for the baby. Rosita, you know you could have come to me if you needed money. Isn't that true? Oh, no. I will never beg to you. You broke my heart, Bob Gibbs. Oh, no, just a darn minute. We talked about this. We agreed. That was an interim relationship. Interim? Interim? What does that mean? It means after my divorce and before Leanne and I got married. I had my manly needs. You had your, your womanly needs. We had an interim relationship. Only a man would invent something so as stupid as an interim relationship. Rosita, I had no idea you felt deeper feelings for me. You should have told me. I told you, in my language. But you know my Spanish is terrible. Not that language, Bob. I told you with my arms and my skin and my lips and my eyes. <laughs> you see, I just thought you were being enthusiastic. <sighs> Rosita, if you still have any tender feelings for me at all. Oh. oh, you're twisting my testicles here now. But right now, my political career is in shambles. And even worse, my wife thinks I'm a liar and a deadbeat dad. A few words from you could go a long way. I guess. You guess? For $2,000, I could be positive. You want to take it slow, I understand that. We don't have to get pregnant right away. Kai, right. what about our kids? Shut up! I'm really good with children. I love you for doing this, Daddy. That's what family's all about, son. We tough out the bad times, celebrate the good times. Well, I got a great family. This Sonny must be one hell of a woman. Risk getting killed for. Well, Daddy, maybe we ought to talk about that. There's something I've been meaning to tell you. What? Well, Sonny, he ain't a woman. He's a fella. Best friend, huh? No, no more than that. More like a significant other. Uh, you talking uh, man love here? Yes, sir. Yeah, you went through a lot of phases growing up. This could be another one. No, this ain't no phase. Are you sure you're not trying to outdo your cousin Boone? You two were always competitive. Oh, I'm sure. Well, at least you don't have to worry about putting the toilet seat down. You disappointed in me, Daddy? I'm proud of all my kids, son. So's your ma. Hell, she probably want to toss y'all a wedding. <laughs> Where's the twins? They should have been here already. All I need to straighten me out is the love of a good woman. And I'm assuming that's where I come in? Yes, ma'am. Well, no offense, Ike, but I'm currently tied up here right now, not to mention the fact that you are an escaped convict and a murderer. I am not. Excuse me, what do you call shooting a guy? I told you that was the wrong guy. Anybody could have made that mistake. Here are some things you should know. Our goal is to secure the location and evacuate Sonny Dupree without incurring any casualties or structural damage to the building. Our only ally this afternoon is the element of surprise. So do not open fire unless fired upon. And what else? Oh, yeah, your brother Elvin's gone queer. All right, boys, battle stations. I know that if we were together, I could change. I know I could. Who is it? From the brush man. Don't want none. For a mere $20, I can guarantee you brushes made by honest to goodness men and women living off the grid. Yes, sir, brushes for all your needs. Hair brushes, toothbrushes. Uh, brushes that brush other brushes? Oh! Uh, just a second. 
Drop it, Ike, or prepare to be euthanized. Youth of what? Verb! The act of ending a person's life. Oh. Elvis. My hero. Huh? Oh. Home wrecker. Good shot, Daddy. Well? Well, she confirmed that the baby is not yours. But you are not out of the woods yet. You and Rosita had an affair while we were still courting. Damn it. She wasn't supposed to tell you that. She didn't tell me that. I intuited it, and you just confirmed yeah, it. Honey, let me remind you we were not engaged at the time. Well, you told me you only had eyes for me. I had a hell of a lot more than eyes for you, Leanne. You were saving yourself for marriage, remember? Men have needs, you know, strong needs that can't be ignored. Yeah. Well, I had needs, too. And now I find out that I was just saving myself for a hound dog. I was a hound dog, you're right. And I was sniffing around where I didn't belong. But, Leanne, I swear, I am trying to work my way up the evolutionary ladder. <sighs> you like this? Really good book that I can't put down. You know, I just can't wait to see how you turn out. But you had better have a happy ending, Bob Ison gives. Real happy ending. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment has arrived. The first step on the long march of realizing a dream. I call it the importance of advertising. Wow. I like the color. What I like is it's big and you can see it from the road. Hi, Dickie. Hola. Hola. Hey, son. Hmm? Do me a favor. Hold the baby. Make nice Google faces. Oh, I've made up my mind. I want another one. <laughs> well, don't look at me, okay? I'm not your science project. I'm the assistant manager. Oh, yeah? Well, then why don't you take this here sheet to the assistant manager's office and wash it? Hello, Hello, Chef Gary. Buenas tardes. See, now, why do men do that? Do what? Objectify women. I wasn't objectifying her. I was having sex with her in my mind. Really? How was it? I'm not done yet. <laughs> Who wants another? I'll take one. The tide is high, gentlemen. Prepare to lose more of your hard-earned dollars. I feel like it. Your Honor, this is Brittany Marie. She drove all the way from FSU. Well, hello. Judge Gibbs, I'm a poli-sci major. I heard your speech on the radio. It is so good to finally hear somebody tell it like it is. I want to be part of your campaign. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm flattered, I'm sure. I'm willing to start at the bottom, lick envelopes, anything. It's refreshing, isn't it, to find young people so turned on by the political process. May I see your driver's license? 21. Excellent. Hector. Escort this young lady to my chambers right away. Have her fill out an application. Just a formality, sweetheart. Oh, this is so great. I'm going to be working for Judge Bob Ism Gibbs. Oh, I assume. I assume. Yeah, right this way. Welcome aboard. Hey, Big, I brought you lunch. Howdy, Martha. What a surprise. Let's go eat. Come who's, on. who's that young girl walking with Finch? Oh, her? Yeah. Oh, just some new intern. She's very, very pretty. Yeah, it's kind of a shame. Why's that? A lesbian. <laughs> Boy, 
just don't get no better than this. Mm-hmm.